Hi, this is Dan. I was doing some writing and editing here, and when I do that, I often will stream just all sorts of stuff in the background. But but in this particular case, I is a, a video from another uh, D and D related YouTuber about Fourth Edition. And Fourth Edition come is referenced a lot. Um, when you stream videos about the history of D&D &D and, and uh, arguments about D&D &D within the D&D &D community. So I thought I would make a, a real quick, I don't know, I guess you could call it a response video or an explainer video. Because my experience spanned 4th edition. Um, and... Uh, so this is what happened with 4th edition for new players who, who wonder about it. D&D, when 4th edition came out in 2008, D&D was 30 years old at that point. Um, and in 2000, the, D, the entire TSR, which was the original developer of, of Dungeons and Dragons, the entire TSR company was bought out by Wizards of the Coast. And... Actually, I think that occurred in 1998. But in 2000, Wizards of the Coast, they revamped the entire D&D &D system, uh, made a, a whole new game, really. Although, when you looked at, and it was called 3rd Edition. When you, when you looked at 3rd Edition, you could really see it as a continuation of D&D, &D, Advanced D&D, D&D &D 2nd Edition, um, and then 3rd Edition. So if you had been a long-time player and you came into, there was, the, the, the rules were much more granular in 3.5. It was much less uh, high level, uh, leaving things up. But it was still, uh, it was still a, the same game. You could still look at it and say, oh yeah, I see this is the same game. So what is that game, right? So what is, is, is an important question. And that game that people who have been involved with D&D &D forever really enjoy. And I think that for new players, when they see things like Critical Role or Acquisitions Incorporated, that they see this, is it is a collaborative story building experience, right? So when people who really love D&D &D for that, now we're half a century into it or so, um, look at it, the thing that they, they love is they, they look, think back and they will come up with a story, you know, my party did this, and this happened, and it was great, and this is why, and it was it was amazing. All right, that was that. That's what made me really D and D is is the only game that that uh, really does that. Right, no one no one is talking about a Scrabble experience from thirty years ago, right, or a or a Uno experience from thirty years. Ago. If they are, it's because something disastrous happened, like someone showed up drunk. And, at Thanksgiving and blah blah blah, but but as far as the game itself goes, that's that's that doesn't happen. The only other game that that does happen with is poker. And um, you talk to poker players, they have they have particular hands from thirty years ago that they remember. But that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so that's what people loved about D and D in from the conception of D and D in now. What you also find is you find passers through, right, who think of D&D &D as sort of a dice game, right? Like, oh, we get to roll a bunch of dice and the dice are cool and that'll be fun. But those people don't, don't they're not long-term players, right? If you're, if the, uh, if the draw for you in D&D &D is rolling dice, they're much better dice games. Go play Yahtzee. That's a great dice game, right? Or, um, or Bunko, right? Another great dice game, a lot of fun. That, that's not what that's what's rolling dice is not what is not what's going to keep people in D&D. &D. Uh, there are also a lot of people who see D&D &D as a war game simulator. Again, if that's that's what you're coming to, not going to not going to stick with D&D. &D. There are much better tabletop war game simulation systems. Warhammer 40K, Warhammer, uh, BattleTech. Go play the, those. Are, they're great games. I, I I played them all. I enjoy them all. It's not D&D. &D. It's not the reason I play D&D. Right. Um, the reason that long term players have stuck with D&D &D is because it is a collaborative storytelling event and 
every now and then, the stories are fantastic, right? So that's the history coming into fourth edition. So what? So where did Ford? So, and that's that is the the issue that comes up with fourth edition is it was a dramatic deviation from that. Fourth edition is not a collaborative storytelling event. Fourth edition is a system uh, designed to set up a tactical combat simulation scenario. It's very much about getting miniatures on a battle map and then uh, carrying out that tactical combat simulation. And like I said, there are better tactical simulations out there. Um, well, uh, and then, but the question then becomes, why did why did fourth edition happen then? And and this is the reason I don't talk negatively about fourth edition. Uh, so what so what happened was, two thousand third edition comes out. It's it's a it's the most successful edition of D and D, even more successful than the than the thirty years of A D and D, and and like immediately, like with I think within within twelve months. The third edition had outsold the the totality of the previous two editions. I believe that's right. I, I could be wrong. That may be apocryphal. But um, so things are rolling along great, um, and now 2004 November is a is a is a uh, tectonic shift in in the gaming world. World of Warcraft premieres, and at first people are like, oh well, that's a completely different. Type of game. It's it, it's it's there's it's it's uh you know it's not in person. It's a um, but by two thousand six ish, everybody was playing World of Warcraft. I I I, I was right. I I in in two thousand three, my primary hobby was Dungeons and Dragons, sprinkled in some other games of different types like BattleTech. I played some BattleTech and. Played some Shadowrun, anyway, but primarily Dungeons and Dragons. Right by 2006, I was playing World of Warcraft, as were all of my everybody I know who had been playing D and D, uh, and and we would still meet for D and D once a week ish, uh, but we would not. It was not the investment, uh, either time wise, emotional wise, or financially that it had been in 2003. Well, Wizards of the Coast are are screwed. Right? They're smart business people, and they saw that. And, like, they saw it, and, and they're like, "Okay, this this is this is not a um, a we cannot continue along this path. We cannot ignore this monumental shift in the, in the gaming industry." So there were so there were, so fourth edition is very much like you you can you can draw just straight line from World of Warcraft to 4th Edition, right? 4th Edition is very close to uh, a tabletop uh, emulation of World of Warcraft um, boss fights. That's, this is, uh, may, and I might be biased in that, in that view. Like, it could be that I was playing, you know, World of Warcraft so much that that I was able to to impose that view of of gaming on fourth edition, and it wasn't intentional. But man, it sure seemed that way. Sure did seem like whenever I, well, uh, and 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 I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? So and 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 the numbers support that. So fourth edition, uh, when it premiered, it sold as much as three point as, as third edition. Outside of those, if you were to take like the last two years of, of prior to or something like that, but it was it was financially a success. It saved D and D from from the ash heap in Wizards of the Coast. But for those long time players, when they who who were not playing World of Warcraft, who they they um they looked at Fourth Edition like, oh my God, this is this is not a collaborative story building experience. This is a miniatures combat game, um, and if I wanted to play a miniatures combat game, I would paint up my Warhammer minis and go play Warhammer. It's a much, it's a much more evolved, much more uh, uh, mature system, uh, and uh, so 
you had this dramatic reaction from that really core audience uh, who who had seen who knew D and D as a collaborative story building experience, and fourth edition just very much was not that. Um, you, I guess, if you if you if you worked really hard to work outside the fourth edition rules, you could probably get in some collaborative story building. But it just was very much very clearly, and it, it was even in the the lead in. Um, the lead in advertising the fourth edition, they they perpetu or they establish these complete fallacies about D and D and the way it should be played. They like if you if you go, I remember this very distinctly. Is if if you looked at the the premier advertising the lead in like a year before, they tried to promote this idea that D and D had always been about miniatures, all the way back in the in nineteen century. Well, it is true that D&D evolved from uh, the miniature battles uh, uh, population, like players who played uh, painted miniature battles that had its own rules. A lot, the most popular one was called Chain Mail back in the 60s. D&D evolved from that. But, but, but D&D from its inception was like, yeah, we evolved from that, but we are very different. We are not about tactical combat. We are about uh, storytelling and, and, and interacting with, with the environment beyond the battlefield. Um, we do have rules for combat, but, but it's individual combat. It's not mass combat. Um, and it was just, it, so it was a fallacy. It was, it was a, that Wizards of the Coast wanted fourth edition to be, seen as a continuation of these long-standing traditions of D&D, and it simply was not. It was, it was a dramatic deviation from all of the traditions of D&D. Now, 5th edition returned to those. Right? So if you look at Critical Role and, or you know, any of the popular streaming, um, yeah, or my game, you know, I have videos, although my, my production value is very low, you see that what we are doing in 5th edition is once again, we are building these collaborative stories, right? The DM is working with the players to build these uh, narratives that are heroic and imagination grabbing and are, are way, way beyond the individual comics. Now, usually interesting combat plays a significant role, but it's but it but the game is is much more than just getting miniatures on a on a, a battle grid and or tokens in the case of virtual type sauce. Um, so that's what happened with 4th edition. I, just one, one aside there. The reaction to 4th edition, uh, those longtime players said, well, okay, we'll take 3rd edition and we will transform that into its own game system that will run uh, uh, parallel, outside. I don't know what you want to know. That, that became Pathfinder. That's what Pathfinder is. Pathfinder is the continuation of third edition um, from those players who did not like fourth editions and were, were wanting to continue with that long history of collaborative story building with that game system. Now, I, like I said, I, I, don't, uh, I, I, I don't criticize, I'm, I'm, I'm not being critical of uh, Wizards of the Coast in developing fourth edition. It was a necessary response to the gaming environment at that time. Right, World of Warcraft was so influential, and uh, within Wizards of the Coast, by far the largest profit center in the in the D and D family was selling miniatures. Right, they 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 had they had came out with these line of pre painted plastic miniatures. I don't know, in like two thousand two, they were hugely popular. They the sale of those miniatures led to collectors of those miniatures. It was a very lucrative. So I can understand how, if you're if you're Wizard of the Coast saying, "Oh my God, we, the 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 gaming sector has changed dramatically," but we're still very profitable in miniatures, and we can pattern a game after uh, these mul massive multi the most popular massive multiplayer online game, World of Warcraft. Let's do that, right? That 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 can that can save our game. Otherwise, it's just going to wither away, and and um, so. That's what happened with fourth edition. That's the reason it is so controversial, and why you see so it, so many references to it whenever people talk about the history of D and D. It was such a 
such a deviation and such a shock to the D and D community that it was that it was so extremely different than the game that they had had loved for thirty years in many cases. Um, anyway, I hope that's helpful. If 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 it is, great. And so thanks.